Hi, welcome to the Coffee Chat Show here on Buzzing Patea, the show we talk about things that are happening right here, right now, as well as general news, tips, information, and advice. Now, welcome back to part two. Joining me, Robin, how you doing, my man? How are we doing? Yeah, I'm <laughs> good. Still got the firm handshake. shake. What's that all about? You want to stop cooking all them blimmin' eggs? I haven't been cooking this morning. <laughs> now, if you missed part one, have a look. There's a link in the description below uh, where Robin shares about his history here. Believe it or not, you've been 25 years, you're saying? Long time. You don't look old enough. How's that work? Work. <laughs> Hard work. Oh, so, now, when I first came here, I came here exactly 12 years ago, and one of the places that I remember going to unbeknown to me was Robin's Nest in uh, Soy Diana. Yeah. I didn't realize until about five minutes ago, sitting here with you, you, you built that place, that was yours. Yes, it I was. I mean, tell me about how long ago was that? That was 24, 25 years ago. I turned up and um, basically we had the, uh, the shell, because that's what Linky built, was just the shell. Right and um, we did the whole internal build on it. They didn't have anything inside and we added the top floor to it. And everyone thought I was mad because there was nothing in this area at the time. Yeah. Um, Mr. Linky had just finished the LK Metro um, complex, but there was, everything was for sale. It was all brand new. Wow. And I remember this because there wasn't even 7-Elevens or family mats here then. And Hang on, I've got to interrupt you. So you mean to so say you could walk down the road without going doo 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 doo? Oh man! There was this little shop across the road, and they used to come out and get their Samsung, their <laughs> bottle of soda, and their ice from the shop. Brilliant! And sit there all day telling me I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> so we have moved on a long way. So no 7-Elevens, I mean, that's just like, I, I can't. Unbelievable, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I can't imagine. Because, you know, you, nowadays you come in, when you go to sleep, it's like, doo doo in your head. You think, yeah. oh, God, shut up. So Robin's Nest, when you first came, I know when we spoke in part one that you came here, obviously, you know, traveling around. Why a restaurant? I mean, have you got a restaurant background? Yeah, I've been brought up. I was born in the game, you know, in London. Um, and I've worked for big companies like Bass, Tesco's, where we, we were always dealing with food. So. You know, I have a good knowledge of food. Yeah. And I, I didn't want to open a beer bar because I'd done my time in beer bars and not for me, you know. Mm. I, I just wanted to move into restaurant and hotel. I'm going to ask the dumbest question in the world. Robin, Robin's Nest. Yeah. Was that just a play on your, on your well, name? Well, a friend of mine, a Welsh friend, he said, why didn't you call it Robin's Nest? As in, you know, the, the, the series, series oh, Robin's yeah, Nest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was it Robin was, Asquith, wasn't it? Robin yeah, Asquith? Yeah, yeah. God. And I just said, well, I'll call it Robin's Nestaurant. That's oh, what it okay. was called. Yeah. It was actually called Robin's Nestaurant. And of course, Robin. you always were known as Robin's Nest. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. So how long did you have Robin's Nest for? Eight years. Eight, Eight years. years. Yeah. And from Robin's Nest, where did you go next? Because you've got one, two, I think four. It's four. This is your fourth restaurant now, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So Robin's Nest to... Well, at the same time when I had Robin's Nest, I had um, what's known as Jolly's now. Okay. Back in those days, it was Robin's Nest too. Okay. Um, and I sold that to Steve. And then I sold Steve, being an Irish boy, he had that one, took that one off me. And then I sold this one to Steve from the sportsman. And then I moved over to Vietnam. It was in the times where Thailand was getting a bit shaky after all the red shirt, blue shirt, okay. closures of airports and all that, and I just wanted a change, so I went to Vietnam. I just felt Thailand, the party was over. Oh, all right, I got you, I got you. Yeah, and I, I moved out, and I've seen Thailand just fizzle downward ever since then. Mm. I mean, you come back, Yeah. and then obviously the one that I remember that's just changed hands recently, I, well, I say recent, it's probably longer than what I realized, but it seems like recent, was Chunky Monkey. Yeah, I sold that to, to Sadish. I told him not to buy it because he come from the um, garment industry and he, he, he didn't know anything about this industry, which is a very, very hard industry and you have to work a lot of hours. Yeah. And you basically have to be able to cook. I do all the shopping with my Vietnamese girlfriend um, and, and, and you've got to be able to cook. Yeah. If you can't cook, why would you buy a restaurant? <laughs> You know, I mean, I find that bizarre, but most of my restaurants I've sold, they can't cook. There was only the Robin Nest boys that had a, a good insight to food. Yeah. You know, and they made it work, but the rest of them all lost their money because they knew nothing about the industry. And from Chunky Monkey to now, 
which is a very well known, very widely spoken about the hungry hippo. So Robin's Nesteron, have you changed a lot to call it a hungry hippo? I mean, where's that come from? <laughs> where, no, where it's, that it's, name? <laughs> it's just a bit of fun, you know. You know, we, we did the chunky monkey, hungry hippo, and then he said we open another one, we'll call it the gutsy gorilla. You know, it's just a bit of fun, like McDonald's and, yeah. and KFC. It's just people remember it. But the thing is, you say it's a bit of fun, but actually it's an extremely successful business you have here. Yes. Definitely. And it's, you know, when we, when we talk about, you know, when Robin's saying it's a bit of fun, it's actually not. It's actually extremely hard work. I mean, let's talk about you as an individual first, and then we'll talk about the Hungry Hippo as a business. You know, you run this business. Now, for people watching from the outside looking in, myself included, I've never been in the restaurant industry, so I have no idea. Talk about your average day. What do you do as a normal, well, not normal, because it's not normal, because I only work under one hour, but what do you do as a restaurateur? What's your day? Well, normally we, in normal times, obviously things are a bit different now with the COVID, but it's only the, the shorter hours now because we go through the same process. Yeah. You know, we, we wake up um, about six o'clock um, and that's when we start cooking. Obviously, we get in our kitchens before the 9, 10, 11 o'clock because we're very busy around those yeah. times and it's a lot cooler. Yeah, we got a big kitchen so we can all cook. We're not on top of each other because I've got yeah. a 100 square meter kitchen. Wow. Yeah, so it, it was designed like a Ferrari to pump out meals quickly regardless yeah. of whether I'm cooking or not. So that, that's the first thing we do is start the morning cook, okay. which has been previously prepped. So all your um, vegetables have been chopped, all your meats have been chopped, ready for me to go in so at six o'clock. So do you do that the day before then? Always, oh, always. Okay, wow. So we can go in there and just go bang, hit it just hard. It, yeah. And now we only do about two hours a day, but in high season, we're looking at an eight hour cooking day. So, you know, I always say to customers, they go to the gym, they do this and the other, they say, come and stand in my kitchen for five minutes. <laughs> You won't, you, because you're standing there with a lot of big burners, which depletes all the oxygen, mm. and it's that hot, you don't even sweat. Mm. You know, so it's an environment that is not friendly, and it's very exhausting. What time do you finish? Well, normally I'd get a kip about one o'clock. Yeah. You know, I'd go up there, have a shower, and just collapse. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm talking about 20 minutes, half an hour. And then I get up, and then I go and do a load of shopping, and we start planning for tomorrow. And that's what we do, seven days a week. Um, things have got harder in one respect now because we're doing a lot of takeaway food yeah. in pre-made. So we're, that's a completely different cook to my normal cook. So we're cooking twice a day, one for the takeaway food, one for the... And you've got a frozen range well, which we'll talk about in a lot more detail. Yeah, but that's what I'm on about. Oh, it's a, it, okay, sorry, it's yeah. a totally different cook. Right. So, you know, we had to buy more deep freezes. And, and I kid you not, we got about 25, 30 deep freezes and fridges on this place. Wow. Because we have to cook it, chill it, freeze it. Mm. You know, it's a big process. See, what I love about this is like, you know, you ride past here, oblivious to all the hard work that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, no one knows. You know, you, you chip up and, you know, we're going to talk about this in a bit more detail, but, you know, your pricing is just ridiculously, crazily, like, low. And we'll talk about the margins in a bit more detail in a bit. but. You know, for when you walk through the door and you see like, you know, you look at like these menus here that you're seeing in my hand, you know, they're, they're, there's a good example. So scrambled eggs on toast or two fried up like 69 baht. You couldn't even go down the road and buy it for that. With a tea or coffee yeah. and a free but, refill. Can I order <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? So, you know, so in your day then, we're talking early start through to sort of one, two o'clock in the afternoon, you'll grab an hour to yourself to try and recharge your batteries, have a shower and, and maybe get a half hour's quick power yeah. nap. Then you're back in again. And what time does, does the business close? Excluding the fact that we're in COVID right now, what time would it normally close? Well, normally, as you could imagine, if we were pushing 1,200 one one meals through the business, which we were doing pre-COVID, the girls don't finish in the kitchen until one. So you know, 1,000 meals a day. Yeah, so we, we don't um, get a lot of sleep because the kitchen's back open at six and it's right below us, we sleep here. So it's bang, 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 bang with the pots and pans, wow. you know. So you're getting five, six a thousand hours, a hours sleep a day. That's all you're getting. Wow. So let's talk about the restaurant menu. So, you know, I've been in here a few times myself. I've eaten here. The food's very good. I'm, you know, no dramas whatsoever. 
In terms of the menu, I mean, you've got an incredibly comprehensive menu. I mean, there's literally, and I'm probably going to insult you now, but it feels like there's hundreds of meals available. There's, there's, it's the biggest range in the city, without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, how do you possibly cater for all those different choices you give people? Well, when I cook it all, I order it all. And I don't believe in computers in any form or manner. It's all in my head. Right. I don't ever write down um, ingredients, how much of this, nothing. Really? It's because it's, I've got a very good photographic memory, so I c can control all my stock. I know exactly where we are at any one time of the day. And you're right, we, I mean, we hold upstairs. I, God knows how many thousand meals we will hold at any one time, yeah. even now. Because we're doing three, four hundred meals a day. It's not a lot when you're shifting that. We're constantly... Mm. I mean, my food don't stay in my fridges generally for, in normal times, ten days. Wow. You know, when I make a batch of something, like if I make, do the curries, I will have four saucepans. Each saucepan will hold 80 litres. 80 litres, yeah, 320 no. litres is my favourite food in the world. Just the curry, <laughs> you know, but we, we can spin that off in 45 minutes. So a lot of onions, all pre-cooked up, garlic yeah. and all this, and then we just go bang, bang. We have the, the big soup sticks we drop in there. And um, I got a kitchen boy that does that because my shoulders are a bit tired yeah. after the years. I know that handshake was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> oh, I saw my neck, my neck. But I mean, you know, so we, we can bang it out quick. Mm. You know, so we can cook at very high speed because all our burners are on high because we've got the mixers that go into them so it doesn't burn. I guess the question I want to ask you because obviously now you're talking about a lot of volume here, a lot of, uh, you know, quick turnaround. and. Rightly or wrongly, you know, Thai people in general are quite relaxed, quite laid back, quite chilled. And they can't afford to be like that in this environment. Because Not in my such kitchen. A, yeah, I was going to say, you've got such a quick footfall. The, the girls we pay daily. Okay. We pay their tax for them. They get good tips here because obviously the volume of customers that come through the door. Yeah. Um, so even in the COVID times now, most of my girls are on 15,000, 17,000 a month and they're paid daily. Wow. And I always say to my girls, don't blame other people. You either work in the team or you don't. Yeah? Now, if you want to change and you want to be in this team and you want to earn good money, obviously you can do that. Mm. But if you, you can't work in this team, you can't work here. You know, you, you have to be able to run. The first thing we say when we interview them, have you got a pair of trainers? <laughs> yeah. No, we do because they have to go up yeah. and downstairs. Up and then and, and then we got girls here, you know, I mean, Ning, she's coming this morning at nine o'clock. She'll work till 10 o'clock tonight. Wow. And, and she, you know, we put her on overtime, obviously, because I knew you were coming today. So she'll run my floor yeah. just in case it gets busy. When Sorry, Ning. Here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the, the end of the day is if, if you want to be paid eight or nine thousand, go and work in that restaurant. Yeah. Most of my girls in high season will earn between 20 and 30,000 a month. Wow, that's crazy. Because they get excellent tips, which you get every day, they get excellent wages, they get holiday pay, they get overtime pay. And we purely work on numbers. Mm. You know, that's why we sell food at the price we do. Mm. You get a thousand people through the door, it's a thousand drinks. And we don't charge mm. stupid on, we keep our price down. Oh, the prices are, uh, I mean, I'm not, I'll show you now, have a look at the menu. The prices that you're charging here, as you can see, are just like phenomenal, I mean like, I guess the question, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm nobody, so please don't take this the wrong way, but why are your margins so low when other places around here dictate a higher price? It's, it's all, even since Robin Ness, we've done turnover of people. Okay. You know, um, I had a military chef running a business down the road, and um, he did I don't know, 150 Christmas dinners at 600 baht. And he was saying to me how he made more profit per customer. And I said, yeah, you did 200 customers. I said, I was running the two restaurants. I did 3,000 customers. Cool. Every one of them had a drink. So I sold 3,000 drinks. You just sold 200 drinks. Yeah. So the profit, you know, is in the drinks, you know. And, and you can afford to, your water, your tea, your coffee. It, it's cheap. Mm. The machinery costs the money. Yeah. Like the ice cream machine, the Coke machine. We're the only restaurant with a Coke machine. Now, Coca-Cola don't put Coca-Cola machines in restaurants. Yeah, no, that's true, yeah. You have to be turning the figures to get one, you know? So people coming here, what would you say your most popular meal is? Curry. Is it really? 
we, we, we have all the big flashboards on there, which is more than normal yeah. um, because of the COVID times. And the people we are serving now, the majority of them haven't got work, you know, no fault of their own. We have a load of old age pensioners here, which are all on a budget. Yeah. You know, so there's no point in charging, you know, big prices. If the market's not there, you need people through the door. Mm. And if you give all my boys eat morning, night, morning, night, some of them three times a day. Wow. You know, but they come back because we change those menu boards constantly. Mm. You've got to remember, they don't want to go to the same restaurant, eat the same boring food. I look at the other restaurants and I see they've got the same menu, same thing, and no customers. We change those constantly. We make new products every week. We put them on the boards and we push them out at 99 baht, 109, to get the people used to the product, mm. and then we push them up to 139, 149. And that's your limit now, 150 for a meal. Yeah. After oh, that, they will go somewhere else. One of the things I really do think is incredibly impressive is your selection of breakfast cereals. I've been downstairs and like, I've seen like all the different uh, breakfast cereals you have, the toast and the, the you know, the, I think your breakfast, and I, you know, I'm looking at behind you and there's a huge menu there, but I think your breakfast really is very impressive, the selection you offer. Well, I can't believe how many people eat porridge, <laughs> right? Because I hate it. I was fed it for 16 years, right? You would never... <laughs> well, you shouldn't have got porridge. banged up, should you? <laughs> <laughs> but you forget, back to the audience, they're all old men. Yeah. You know, and they like porridge. Young at heart though, guys, you're young at heart. <laughs> Not old, you're young at heart. Yeah, I don't mean that. I need their He's money. I need their money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you've got a great team of staff. How many staff do you have at a given time? We, we've got 20 now, but we were running on about 45, 50. And if you were to be in a room, but they couldn't see you, and they were having to talk about you, how would they describe you? They know we've got cameras everywhere and, and we've got um, audio and video on oh, Yeah. So they say you're amazing, you're a lovely guy. But when you've done 30 years of it, you can actually see the body language. <laughs> yeah, ties are very easily to read, aren't they? Their body language is brilliant. You know the when they're happy, the, when they're sad. The bottom line is, like every, I, I was a troubleshooter with the big companies, yeah. right? I'm here to do a job, right? And that job is to make sure they get paid every day, yeah. make sure my staff are safe, my customers are safe, they're getting value for money. I, I don't care what people think about me. Mm. You know, I come from a very, my father was very hard military and um, it, it was a very hard yeah. upbringing. So we, we were paid to do a job, you know, not a pat on the back or anything like that. And at the moment, people need to understand that people's needs, whether it be staff or customers, are bigger now than they've ever been. Mm. They, they, they need their money, they need it daily. My customers need food, they need fresh food, plenty of vegetables and all that. Um, they need change of food and they need it all at the right price. Mm. Right, go, come to the Hungry Hippo. The food is excellently priced and it tastes very, very good. Come down to Hungry Hippo. Great prices and great food. You know, my girls have been paid. We dropped their salary the week before. We were going to put them on two days off a week, but, okay. I, but I held back. You know, people come in and they say, you're mm. making loads of money. And I said, we've well, never ever been in the game, have you? Because we lost about £20,000 last year mm. of my money I had to put in the till. But that's, we're clawing that back day by day now mm. because things are picking up. Talk about your frozen stuff, because um, I mean, I've noticed now coming in recently, you've got a lot of frozen food now, which you never had in the past. I mean, where did that evolve from? What was that, that decision? Well, it's all to experience again. I was a Tesco's manager. Um, look at Iceland and England, what they sell, frozen food. You know, I was a bachelor, what did I do? Pick up frozen meals, bang them in the microwave. Covid yeah. times, what do people do? They don't want to go out. Mm. So they pick up five meals, 10 meals, 20 meals. And some people pick up uh, like 20 lasagnas. They'll cut them in half, put them on a plate with some chips and some salad and sell them in their restaurants. <laughs> but that's what they do because our portions are very big. Right. <laughs> you know, all the portions we sell on our frozen range are double you know what you can buy anywhere else right and they're at least 40 percent cheaper and they're fresh cooked as well yeah. you know by me so it works and it works well yeah and we've seen a massive um influx of people in the last week coming for their injections and they buy the the white boxes and they've taken them back to the villages so you've gone from robin's nest through through now all the way down to here where we are hungry hippo mm -hmm. If I said to you, you know, let's fast forward five years, 
where do you see yourself? What do you see the out the outcome will be? Have you got plans to expand? Because obviously you're extremely busy now, and I'm guessing that may get better and better. The, the, the problem I had, the reason why I sold um, Chunky Monkey, is because of ill health. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm disabled, registered disabled, and years and years of cooking. I got seven discs, three gone in my neck and four gone in my lower spine. Right. Um, I've been for all the scans. I just had a hernia operation, just had pneumonia, just had seven kidney stones. <laughs> You know, I've not had a good okay three years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had a migraine for three days, which has been caused by my neck. And you know, I've seen a specialist, and they said, you need to get back to your country. They can't operate, you know. So um, that, that's the bottom line. Uh, this one is for sale now, but I'm not going to give it away. Um, we're looking at doing a sensible thing, last out another year, make some money and sell it on then, when everything starts to pick up and get back to normal. Um, and then I've got to go back and get things assessed in the UK. Okay. Mainly to get 100% disability because it was the accident happened in the UK, which I can qualify for easily. Okay. okay. You know, and then I'll see. I, I can't stay in the UK because I've got arthritis too much. Yeah, the weather there's no good. Well, I'll, I'll be a cripple there. Yeah. So I have to come to warmer weather. And, and basically, I'll see how the governments are sorting things out in various countries yeah. and I'll come back to the country I feel it's viable to open a business. You know, my girlfriend's Vietnamese, my girlfriend, my wife now, I got married about two months ago. Oh, yeah, congratulations. I thought I was going to die, that's why I got married. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not he didn't joking. mean that, if you're watching, he didn't mean it. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> she paid for the wedding. <laughs> but, um, you know, we, we can go anywhere and we can do anything. Because um, she's been with me for nine years, so she's learned a lot. Yeah. And she's, she's very good. Um, she speaks five, six different languages wow. straight away. She just wow. goes bang, bang, bang. Um, you know, she always says to me, it doesn't matter is if you're in a wheelchair as long as your brain's still working. Oh, mm. well, yeah. You yeah. know, so we've got a lot of choices for the future. But the first thing is medically, I need to go back and get okay. assessed, you know. Okay. And sort things out. So there. we're coming to the end. I've got to ask this question because I, I do see some of the chefs on TV and I think to myself, if I was a restaurant owner, and I saw someone like, I don't know, Gordon Ramsay or Jamie on walk through the door, I think, oh God, oh no, they're gonna destroy me. When you walk through the door, because obviously the other restaurants know who you are, they know you, do you go out and eat in other restaurants and do you walk through the door and are you honestly, honestly, do you like think, what is this? Or are you open to just saying, do you know what, we're having a nice meal, let's just enjoy it? Um, I mean, me and my girlfriend, we tend to go out for a drive and come and eat in the best restaurant in town because we know what we're getting. Okay. You know, we get good service, good food, and because we know our food. Um, because we've seen a big um, downturn in restaurant managers being foreigners and chefs here, that the food isn't too polite. It used to be in an abundance and there was a load of places to go mm. to. But now it's hard work finding good food at a cheap price as well. You can go and get a nice high-end steak, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm quite happy basically in my own food. I'll go to Pizza Hut if they got a special on. The, 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 you've got all these amazing dishes here. You've got this lovely kitchen. You've got like, you must have hundreds of choices and you're gonna have a pizza. Well, we took pizzas <laughs> off the menu because our pizzas took half an hour to make. They right. were made fresh, thick base, you know, really thick pizzas. And people, you know, well, why can't I do it in five minutes? Because you can't make a proper pizza in five minutes, mm. you know, so I took them off. But if we have to get out of the business as well, so we yeah. always go for a drive around. But you know, we, we need to see the, the restaurants come back. We need to see chefs back in the city. There, there isn't many in the city now. I mean, I know the whole of Batea inside out, upside down, but we need that expertise back. Like we need the school teachers yeah. back. You know, and until we get that level of um, training and education in our restaurants, then the, the Thais don't know because they're not being trained. No. And unless they're being educated and trained, they can't change. Can you eat Thai food? Yeah, I eat Thai food, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's your favorite Thai dish? I, I just always eat um, chicken cashew nut or sweet and sour chicken. Oh dear. Yeah, they're, that's it's not easy Thai food, food now. That's, that's, that's English style, eh? That's English, <laughs> English food. Oh man. <laughs> All right, well listen, it's been fantastic. Thank you so no much problem. for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Been Guys, pleasure. this is Robin from here Thank in the you. Hungry Hippo in Soibacow. Uh, I'll put a pin drop on the map now for you to know where we are. And check out the link in the description below. I'll put a link to their Facebook page. Listen, you know, I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to simply say to you guys, come here and you be the judge, all right? You be that this place turns out literally thousands of meals week in, week out, right now as we speak. 
and you know you cannot argue about the prices that you get in here and the quality of the food exceeds the price that you're paying by a mile honestly you won't be disappointed so there you go guys that's it from us here at the hungry hippo thank you so much for watching and uh, please as always remember hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon if you'd like to be notified when i bring out a new video check out our members area and get on our discord group join on there and uh, have a look around and get chatting to people just like you that got a love for this wonderful city here in Pattaya. all right that's it for me guys thank you very much for watching and please as always wherever you are in the world stay safe